Hi, this is Rick. Um, another ambient effects um, extension of where the where we left off on the last um, video. Uh, one of my uh, supporters, <laughs> JMac, asked me if I could do a more detailed description of how to create a PA system in Arma 3. So I'll get to that just now. Um, one of the things I've added since the last video is this um, this little area. There's a detention center, and uh, as you can see, we have a couple of bad guys or four bad guys that are being detained in this area, and this area is currently open. Um, I've added a feature where you can, um, where if if the players in my group decide that they're unhappy with one of the the human players in the group who's maybe misbehaving or shooting teammates or just generally not staying with the group and uh, you know not listening to orders that we can actually collectively vote him into the stockade and then he'll get dumped in here for 15 minutes and or five minutes or whatever specified time and then after that time period is elapsed the doors will automatically open and he can walk out um, when he gets dumped in here, this door gets locked and he can't actually get out, which is kind of useful. Um, but that's a separate video. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'm still working on the the voting system, but I kind of think it's kind of a kind of a cool <laughs> feature. It could be completely misused by players, obviously, but it could be also quite funny. Anyway, back to the PA system. So what we're going to do is we're going to recreate the PA system for JMAX. So nice thing about the, this um, Eden editor is like it's just so well written it's amazing probably one of the best editors I've ever seen anyway so we have a, a loudspeaker over here which um, we'll just go and find that same entity so we'll right click and find it in the asset browser and we will dump it over here and we're going to call this loudspeaker 2 Loudspeaker tool. Okay, and we're going to cheat. I'm going to take this little trigger and dump it over here. Um, I made a mistake in my previous uh, video where I actually remote exec the 3D sounds, which is actually incorrect. Um, it was a really stupid mistake because, and I often make this mistake because um, 3D sounds quite tricky. Um, like in this particular instance, the sound is being triggered. Um, the event of the, the playing this playing the sound is being triggered by a trigger, and the trigger is set to true, which means that this trigger will fire automatically and doesn't require any activation, additional trigger activation requirements. Now, when I save this mission and I save it as a multiplayer mission, this trigger will be present in every single copy of the mission. So when a client joins the server, he gets a copy of the mission files, including in the mission file is um, mission dos SQM is this trigger. So each client, this trigger will fire. And therefore, you don't need to remote exec it. Remote exec basically means that if a single player will, let's say the trigger condition was um, P1, player 1, in this case, each of my units are numbered P1 to P9. So um, if P1 walked into the trigger and the condition was Blue Force present, let's say, and P1 in this list, then, and I wanted the, the 3D sound to play on all the clients, then I would need to remote exec it. So that it would then broadcast from my, my machine would then send a message out to all the clients and the clients would then sort of play that sound. But in this case, since this trigger exists on all of the clients, you don't need to do that. So the, in this case, we're going to say true. I'm going to have the trigger fire off 10 seconds. And it's going to be loudspeaker 2. And it's going to say PA2. Because that's going to be the name of the sound file that we create. Okay, so we've set up the object that's going to play the sound and we've set up an instruction. Now, the Say 3D, basically what it does is it uh, it looks in this little array here and it says uh, the, first, the first element in the array, which is loudspeaker 2, which is the object that plays the sound. 
The second object is the receiver of the sound, in this case, player. Now, obviously, player is different on each client. So if I'm standing 10 meters away, the sound will be attenuated for my distance from the source. And obviously, if someone is on the other side of the map, they're not going to hear it at all. I think the attenuation, to be honest, the fall off, which is basically what attenuation is, the sound fall off, in, at my, in my opinion, is too extreme in Armour 3, but that's just me. Anyway, so that's what this does. So it's, it's loudspeaker 2. So it's the source of the sound, the receiver of the sound, the command, and what sound file it's going to play. We'll get into this now. Okay, so we're going to make a sound file. Um, I use Cool Edit Pro. It's an old program, but it's still extremely good. So we're going to go new, 44 kilohertz, uh, mono, 16 bit. Since we're broadcasting from a single point, uh, stereo is kind of unnecessary, so we're going to go mono. All right, so now I need to, uh, I use text to, uh, text to speech or TTS. Um, this particular site is really good, natural, www.naturalreaders.com. And um, one of the uh, tricky things here is that you need to switch off your, um, your microphone, which obviously is going to make it difficult for me to, to record um, if I'm not, if I switch my microphone off, but I'm going to have to do it. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep a microphone on, but you'll see that we get like some sort of echo effect, but essentially you want to, you want to record directly off the web using stereo mix, switch off your microphone so you don't get an echo. Um, but I'm going to use it. I'm just going to leave it on for the, for the sake of this example okay so um text to text to speech uses the basic the basic unit of speech in sound is called a phoneme phonemes um the visual representation of a phoneme is a thing called a visem if the mouth movement um is not a one-to-one -one correlation between phonemes and visems a phoneme is essentially um not really a consonant or a vowel it's a combination of all of those things um, for example J J is made up of two phonemes J A Mac is M -ac. so there's probably two as well essentially if you consider the way your mouth moves when you pronounce particular words um, you don't realize that it's that you actually uh, there are about two or three different mouth movements just to make a specific sound anyway so that's that's the uh, bit of useless information so not very well explained but anyway so a phoneme um, so, so the spelling may not necessarily make sense to you but for example uh, J if I just do da J I'm using English Darren because I found that's probably about the clearest voice Let's try that. J Mac, please report to Captain Ricochet immediately. It's actually pretty good. Uh, so doing that probably is not going to make any difference. J Mac, please report to Captain Ricochet immediately. Okay, so that's pretty good. So uh, we'll kind of record that. J Mac, please report to Captain Ricochet immediately. Okay, so that wasn't bad. So um, I'm going to uh, now edit this file. Now, since this file is going to sound a little bit weird because the microphone was on, you're going to hear a bit of a, a, a depth problem. Gmac, please report to. It sounds like I'm standing in a, in a tunnel. So it just so happens that I've already recorded the sound. So I will bring up PA2. Okay. So, J Mac, please report to Captain Ricochet immediately. Okay, so the question is how do you get a sound which is, um, how do you get it to sound like a loudspeaker? So, the first thing I did was um, I went to effects, amplitude, and I did hard limiting because I don't want the peaks to distort. So I trim off the peaks by minus one decimals and I push and I boost the sound by two decibels and I keep doing that until I get a, a reasonable uh, amplitude. OK, 
Okay, so that just boosts the sound. Next thing, I need to add um, a filter. And the filter I'm going to add here is I'm going to use a telephone receiver filter, which just basically trims off frequencies beyond a certain point. It creates that sort of tinny sound, removes a lot of the low sound, the, the, the low frequencies and the very high frequencies. Uh, it's very limited, as you'd expect with a telephone receiver, very limited frequency response. So essentially, apply that. Then the next thing I need to do is create a bit of an echo. So I need a delay effect, echo. And the echo in this case I'm going to use as an auditorium Okay, I'm obviously applying uh, an echo to an echo that's already existent on this. Essentially, when you apply those filters, you end up with you end up with this kind of sound effect, Please report to Captain immediately. which is pretty good. It sounds realistic. It's got a, a rather tinny sound, which is what you'd expect, plus it's a bit of a, an echo to it. So you, what you do is you save your file. It's important that you save it as an Og Vorbis file. If you don't have the Og Vorbis plugin or uh, codec, you can download it. Just Google it, um, depending on what program you're using. Uh, essentially, Og Vorbis is, is um, pretty good. Then what you do is you um, you copy that file into your your mission sound. Well, I make a sound file uh, folder. And then inside there, I put. The, you notice there's two because I'm making the new one for JMac. Just put the file into that. And the next thing you need to do is you need to create a description.ext file if you don't have one. And in the description.ext file, don't worry about all of this stuff because most of this you can do in the editor these days. You can just go into Eden and just fill up, fill out all of the uh, mission parameters. Um, some instances you won't be able to do that, like. Um, I'm not sure if you can do a, a class debriefing kind of thing in the editor. Um, this is basically the text that's uh, presented at the end uh, when, the, when the mission ends. It brings up a debriefing screen. Uh, in this case, it brings up the same image, the home.jpg that was used uh, on load, uh, sorry, on the load screen. Um, and it says, well done soldier, you helped clear out, blah, blah, blah. So you can have that and a little background image and it just finishes the mission off kind of nicely. Um, anyway, you create a class CFG sounds with a little curly bracket. Very important that you get the syntax right. If you make a mistake, it used to crash the game, but now luckily they don't. The error handling is better. So you've got this little curly bracket and a little semicolon. That's very important to close off the command or the statement. Um, so you get a class CFG sounds, and you will see if I go down here, these are all my sounds. There's one here, class PA2. It's very important that you obviously you can call it whatever you want, but as long as it points to the folder, it's a relative folder. So obviously that's the mission folder slash sounds. You don't have to put the backslash in. Uh, backslash PA2, which is the sound file, and then the um, the boost or the sound volume that you want it to be played back at. You need to experiment a bit with that, depending on how loud you want it to be and how how much fall off you want it to have. Um, there are extensions to say 3D where you can uh, determine the the fall off values, but the default fall off I still think is a little extreme. Okay, so you put in your class PO2, save your file, exit, and um, and then you go back into the game. All right, so we're back again. So uh, we now, just to recap, we've got a loudspeaker too. We've got a player and we've got PA2, which is defined in uh, description.ext under CFG sounds. So now when we play this with a huge amount of luck, we should hear a sound coming out of the loudspeaker too. It's a bit of a, lot, a big mission, so it takes a bit of time to load. All right, so after 10 seconds, we should hear 
J-Mac, being called to attention. J-Mac, please report to Captain Ricochet immediately. Okay, so that's kind of cool. So you can hear the attenuation. If I move... Okay, there's a new sound file kicking in. It's going to make it a bit difficult. Apart from the fact that we've got guys running past. Okay, so I'm going to be about, let's say, I don't know, about 40 meters away, 30 meters away. So let's run this loudspeaker 2 player, say 3D PO2. Try that again. You can hear the sound fall off is quite extreme. Definitely think the attenuation is not quite right. I think that also could be part of uh, optimizing performance for Armour 3. You know, if they have to calculate distances over, you know, 50 to 200 meters away or whatever. I suppose if you boost, boost the volume, it would probably do that anyway. And it's probably calculating, I don't know what distance it calculates up to, what the fall off is, but it seems a little extreme to me. Um, anyway, so I hope that was of use. And I'll, um, please subscribe if it was useful, and uh, I'll see you again soon. Cheers.